Welcome to Google Web Designer. Whether you're a total beginner or just curious about what this app can do, don't worry, I'll walk you through step by step in detail so you don't get overwhelmed. So before we jump into clicking buttons, let's take a second to understand what Google Web Designer actually is. This tool is a free software developed by Google that lets you create interactive HTML5 based designs. It's often used to make web content like ads, banners, landing pages, animations, and even full web pages. The best part is it works visually. You don't need to be a pro coder to use it. You can create stunning designs using a drag and drop interface. And if you know some HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, it also gives you a full code control. It's great for designers, marketers, and developers who want to build interactive content fast. All right, now, when I first open up the app, here is what I see. It's a super clean starting screen with four main buttons. So the left side with the first one being create a new file. This is your main starting point. You click this to begin a fresh project from scratch. You'll choose each size, add format, or custom dimensions you want. We'll try this in a second. Next is use template. If you don't want to start from scratch, that's fine. This button gives you a list of ready-made templates you can use. This is useful if you're making common ad types or layouts. And finally, find help. This button takes you to help resources and documentation. If you ever feel stuck, this connects you to Google tutorials, support pages, and community help. I would understand if you're lost because, I mean, as you can see, there are already a lot of buttons and we haven't even started creating one yet. So now let's take a look at the last one, which is open file. This is separated on the right. We have open file. If you already started a project and saved it, this button lets you reopen it. Simple and important. Let's go ahead and click on new file to begin a new project. Now it's going to ask a lot of things. Now you may be, you know, overwhelmed, but I'm telling you it's actually quite simple. You'll get a pop up asking for some basic settings. Do you want to make an ad banner, an HTML page, or a custom size? You can choose the environment like Google Ads or Custom, document type like HTML, AMP, or etc. Let's just go with a basic HTML and let's name it just a simple hello, you know. Now let's tap on OK and there we are. So here's where things really start to open up. Now that we're inside the workspace, let's take our time and understand what all these button panels are. For the top left menu bar, you've got the basic ones, which are in pretty much every single you know, software. For file, this is where you can create new files, open new ones, save, export, publish, or whatever you can do. Standard file management stuff. Under edit, this is where you can undo, redo, copy, paste, duplicate, delete, and more. You'll also find snapping options and your preferences here. For view, this is how you can control the workspace look. Zoom, grid lines, rulers, and guides. This is useful when aligning elements or just fixing it by your preference. View is actually one of these lines right here, if you understand what I mean. Now next, window. You can manage which tool panels are visible. You can hide or show parts of the interface based on what you need. So if you do not want to see this color tab, you can delete that by going into window. And help, of course, this is where you can ask for help. And sign in. If you haven't already, make sure to sign in so you can save your work. Now let's take a look at the toolbar. Starting off with your selection tool. This is used to select, move, or resize elements. Your motion path tool helps give motion to your graphics. 3D object rotate tool. It's very self-explanatory. I don't really have to explain what rotating means. And then you've got your 3D object translate tool. This helps translate your objects in 3D. Now up next is your element tool. Basically, this is where you can insert in elements. There you go. I'm inserting these rectangles, a square if I want to, however big I want them to be. There you go. And I can connect them and connect them. I could even probably change the color. There you go. So if we select this one, we can probably change that as well. But yeah, moving on, we've got this connector tool. Basically, we can, you know, do these things like connect lines and stuff and way more and then we've got the text which is simple i'm gonna tap and then i can type whatever i want like hello there you go 
And then this one, this one is some kind of highlighter. As you can see, we can drag our mouse and then create boxes just like the element tool earlier. So I'm going to get rid of everything on here so that we're clear and then move on to the next. This one, basically, you can color in whatever you want. It's a bucket tool and this is an eyedropper. For example, this is color red. I'm going to tap on it and then now it's going to change to color red. But since it's white, as you can see, it changed to white. We're going to try that again. It's going to be white. There we go. So basically, after you're done with all your graphics and stuff, right in the center is your design canvas. This is where your project lives visually. You drag items here, resize, and animate them. The panel on the right gives you pretty much a lot as well. First, you've got your library. This is where all of your local elements are. If you've used them, they're probably in here. Next up, your properties. This shows detailed settings for whatever you click on, like width, position, color, font, background, and etc. It's the properties of the certain element or graphic that you're choosing or you're selecting. And finally, we've got components. This has pre-built functional items like buttons, carousels, YouTube embeds, maps, and more. Just drag them to use them. Along the bottom, you'll see the animation timeline. Google Web Designer has a full animation system, just like a video editor. You can animate positions, opacity, size, and other properties over time using keyframes. It's great for interactive ads or dynamic content. And you could even scroll through, you know, if you scroll through, you can make slight changes with keyframes, and then you can make your elements pop out and move and animate all together. Now for the top right buttons, first up is the design view. This is the visual mode where you design with a drag and drop, no coding needed, which is where we are right now. Next up is code view. Basically, if you want to hand code your HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, this is the raw text view. If you're into coding or whatnot, this is the one for you. As you can see, there's already a few bits of code in here, and you can edit it however you want to. Next up is preview. This is where you can test your design to see how it actually looks and how it functions. And finally, publish. Export your project into a folder, zip file, or even publish directly to Google Ads if you're connected. So, saving and exporting. When you're done designing, you can go to File, over here, and tap on Save As to save your work locally. You can also export it or publish it, depending on your final format, like what I said. Everything is built using HTML, CSS, and JS, so you can take your designs and drop them into any website or hosting platform. So there you go. That was a full walkthrough for the Google Web Designer app interface. Whether you're a graphic designer, a web developer, or a digital marketer, this app has something for you. You can build responsive ads, animated banners, landing pages, or just interactive web content. And the best part is it's free. Once you get familiar with the layout, it becomes a really powerful designing tool. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments down below if the tutorial works or if you have any questions. Thank you and goodbye.